Hi, so in video 1118, we made this concrete flywheel from some cement and a bicycle wheel. And we followed that up in video 1119 and 1120 by constructing this. Now, this is an experimental generator. It's a prototype, really. Uh, and I want to continue experimenting with it, which means basically taking this ring off and playing around with some configurations on this generation ring. But it did make me think that actually you don't need to do something experimental in inverted commas with this. You could just link up the flywheel to a DC motor and it would still work pretty well actually as a generator. Now, I have two of these. These are 500 watt DC motors and I bought them on eBay because they were 20 pounds each. I couldn't believe it, 20 pounds for a 500 watt DC motor. So I bought two. Luke used one in his uh, scooter, and I've got the other one here that I'm going to link up to this. So I'm going to remove this wheel and link this up, and we'll see what it does as just, if you like, a normal flywheel generator. Anyway, let's take this little bit to pieces. I haven't really bothered to show the build process on this because it's in the other videos, and all I've really done is put another cog on here, which I did by whacking it on. So there's a cog on the opposite side of the wheel and it's connected by a chain to the motor and obviously we turn that handle and that's how the whole thing works. So I drive this, now I'm driving it by hand obviously, there's loads of ways you could drive it, but if I give this a drive and I stop driving it then the wheel continues to turn. Now because that flywheel is continuing to turn and connected to the motor via that cog, the motor continues to turn even though there's no input. Now we do like our names and one of these ways of looking at this is as a flywheel energy system because the flywheel keeps it returning. Another way to look at it is this is exactly what a kinetic energy recovery system is or a KERS system. You're cycling along or you're driving along and you're inputting on that shaft. When you brake, obviously the input stops but because of the freewheel and the momentum within the flywheel the flywheel continues to turn because it's recovering the kinetic energy. Because it can continue to turn, it continues to drive the motor. So in essence, this is what a KERS system is. It's what's in your regenerative braking. It's what all those KERS bicycles are about. It's just a flywheel linked to a chain and a, the other side of the flywheel linked to some kind of output. We've got it on our little motor stroke dynamo so that we can actually get some readings out of it. So let's have a look at some readings on this. The meter's right here and it's reading a DC output because remember this is a DC motor so the commutator actually rectifies the output. So we don't need a rectification and we read straight forward DC output. Now let's give it a spin and see what we can get. <laughs> That's actually quite good. <laughs> now I've got it connected up to vaults. Okay, so I've connected the motor up to this supercapacitor here, and then I've connected the supercapacitor to this little circuit, which is Jewel Thief, and then I've connected it to this lighting panel here, which is uh, 25, and a second, 7, 28, 28 LEDs. So what we're going to do is spin it up, put a bit of charge in the supercapacitor, and then we'll be able to light those LEDs. <laughs> I can tell you those LEDs will stay on for ages from just that little bit of a spin about an hour or so it's crazy actually so there are obvious improvements to make to this this is just to demonstrate the curse principle and how you can actually build one yourself obvious improvements are going to be to do with the gearing so we've got this little cog here going to a not much smaller cog made this cog bigger then we'd be able to get a better speed on that actual flywheel. Obviously, we made that cog smaller, but 
it's quite small as it is because it's a freewheel. So making this one bigger to change the gear ratio. On the reverse side, remember, we had another single flywheel where again we could change that gear ratio. Now the output of the motor. The output of the motor as a generator was in fact a bit disappointing in terms of output because a couple of volts, a couple of amps. But you've got to remember it is a motor, so it's meant to take amps. Because of that, the wires are quite thick. If we actually thinned those wires out, then we would get a much higher voltage and be able to run this thing directly without using the jewel thief. I've obviously put it through a supercapacitor, but you could put it through a battery bank as easily. But the basic principle of the curves is right there. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Please do remember to subscribe and thank you very much for watching.